The Wild Beyond the Witch Light has been out for a few weeks now, and quite a few of you out there are jumping in or are planning to jump into the Fey Wild and deal with all those seely and unseely Fey. So I thought now would be a great time to take a peek at the Plane of Fairies. And for those dungeon masters out there running their own worlds or maybe even their own adventures along the Sword Coast, maybe, just maybe, you'll pick up a few bits of inspiration here as well for your table. So. Let's talk about the mysterious, joyful, and very deadly Feywild. First off, we should definitely start by talking a teeny bit about what the Feywild actually is and its origin in the world and history of Dungeons and Dragons. Now, full disclosure, I've had to do a little bit of research here for you guys because while I've been playing D&D for over 25 years now, when I first started playing, my friends and I exclusively made up our own world. So I don't have the ability to just say, oh yeah, I read this when I first started playing back in second edition, blah, 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 because, well, I didn't. As far as the history of the Feywild, that gets a little complicated because, well, the Feywild didn't exist before fourth edition, except when it did. What I mean by this is the Feywild as we know it in 5th edition didn't exist until 4th edition's release in 2008, and the 5e Dungeon Master's Guide obviously was just released 6 years later in 2014. So overall, the Feywild just hasn't been around that long. But as I've alluded to already, that's just the Feywild as we know it. The reality is the Feywild can actually trace its origins all the way back to the 2nd edition with a little book called the Planescape Campaign Setting with a plane called Arborea. Also, yes, I know the Manual of the Planes for AD&D 1st Edition was released in 1987, but I didn't find anything on Arborea in there, so I'm just gonna go on with that with the video. <laughs> Fast forward to 3rd Edition in the early 2000s, and we get more information on the planes and other places to take our adventures, and now we not only get Arborea, but also get a plane called the Plane of Fairy. This is the really interesting part. Arborea is this place with seely and unseely fey, but also is constructed of three different layers. This big grandiose foresty layer on top, an endless plane of water just below that, and just for kicks, it's got a third layer that's just desert on the bottom. The plane of fairy, on the other hand, is described, to use a quote, as, quote, a land of soft lights and cruel desires, the home of powerful elf-like beings that care little for mortals other than as playthings and prey. It is a country of little people with great desires. It's a place of music and death. So along comes Dungeons and Dragons 4th edition, and now we get a unified vision for a new place born from both Arborea and the Plane of Fairy called, you guessed it, the Feywild. So, who lives in the Feywild? I like to think of this as three different pods of creatures. In our first pod, we have the Eladrin. The Eladrin can generally be thought of as really the people of the Feywild. They are to the Feywild what humans could kind of be considered to the material plane-ish, kind of, sort of. In our next pod, we have the Fomorians, which are basically ugly fey giants that are generally pretty evil in nature, and these can be really a great source for antagonists, all you dungeon masters out there, for a party visiting the Feywild. And then I'm gonna circle back here in a minute to talk about where the Fomorians can be found in the Feywild, but they are kind of a large enough and distinct enough group that I like to think of them as their own little pod, at least I do, personally. Maybe you do, maybe not, I don't know. And then in our final pod, we have really just kind of all the other races, which includes quicklings, dryads, satyrs, pixies, redcaps, hags, and really many, many others. So with all these races, what's the deal with Seely and Unseely? How do we know which ones are which? We don't. Why don't we know? Because Seely and Unseely aren't really a thing. Those aren't terms actually used by denizens of the Feywild. The whole Seely and Unseely thing is basically a term that is used by folks from the material plane. The short version is the terms help differentiate between kind of trustworthy and untrustworthy. How do you know if a Fey is trustworthy? Well, you don't know until you know. And that's part of the journey that is traveling through the Feywild. Okay, Cody, so how does one get to the Feywild then? Well, there are a few different ways. The most obvious is through casting a spell like Plane Shift or Gate. However, these methods might be out of reach for most adventurers as level seven and level nine spells respectively. 
Option two is to find and locate a portal. Now, not all portals are simply open all the time, even if you found one, and they may be keyed to correspond to a correct time, like every day at noon, or perhaps even once a year during an anniversary to an important event from the past. Or they may need something much more straightforward, like a portal key, or even simply a command password. Option number three is to physically travel down a planar path to the Feywild. Yes, this is an actual thing where one might find a direct path to visit a different plane of existence by simply traveling on a planar path, which is basically a set in stone location where you can travel between planes. An example given to us on page 21 of the Manual of the Planes from third edition even lists the River Styx and the River Oceanus as different examples of planar paths. But by far and away the most fascinating and perhaps unnerving way is via a fey crossing. Fey crossings are like a hazy reflection so close to one another that they simply blend back and forth. And the craziest part about a fey crossing is they may not even be obvious. You could walk through an orchard and suddenly find yourself in a powerful fey's garden out in the fey wild. You could go for a swim in a small pond to bathe. And when you surface, you could be on an entirely different plane of existence, possibly without your gear or weapons. This next one's pretty cool. The Fey Dark is actually a thing, AKA the Fey Wild's very own version of the Underdark. If you thought traveling through the Underdark felt like going into a completely alien land, you can just imagine how insane the Fey Dark could and should feel in your games. This, as I alluded to earlier, is where most of the Fomorians can be found. But consider this, the Fey Dark can also have its very own Fey crossings. And in fact, even Drow have been known to use these Fey crossings to travel unnoticed before a surface raid. Now that we're back on Fey crossings just a bit, we get some really wild information on these in a little four ebook called the Forgotten Realms Campaign Guide on page 68 that basically says that because of the Eladrin constructing secret realms on Faerun that are connected to the Feywild, that that, along with the Spell Plague, may have pulled the Feywild closer to the Material Plane. Well, let's put two and two together. For those of you who don't know, in the world of Toril, the Spell Plague ended in 1395 DR and our beloved 5th edition takes place in 1491. So in reality, the abundance of these Fey Crossings are likely less than 100 years old. This could and should have wild implications really on both planes of existence. It is very likely that only a small percentage of these new Fey Crossings have been discovered today because of this, and more likely that as they continue to get discovered, both denizens of Toril and the Fey from the Feywild will look to use them in ways to gain power and wealth. Speaking, of looking back at time, one of the most insane items of note in regards to the Feywild is its history of time warping. In fact, traveling to the plane of Fairy used to be a horrific prospect that could end in you simply aging to death instantaneously upon your return. I know it's messed up, but I'm not making that up. On page 210 in the third edition Manual of the Planes for the Plane of Fairy, we get a wonderful little excerpt that discusses flowing time. Quote, for every day spent on the plane of fairy, a week passes on the material plane. But unlike most planes, time lost on the plane of fairy catches up with the traveler. Non-natives who spend time on the plane of fairy and then return to a plane with the normal time trait instantly catch up. A visitor who stays a long time on the plane of fairy may die if catching up with the material plane takes her beyond her normal lifespan. That's like, that's like the worst death ever. Now, this is much, much more evil when combined with the fact that the fey creatures, not just from the unseelie courts, mind you, but seelie courts as well, have been known to lure and even just straight up kidnap folks from the material plane to invite them to dinner or well, you know, sleep with them, to put it nicely. I mean, so you like, kidnap somebody, you take them home, you guys do your thing, and then they leave, and then like 40 years of their life is gone. Like, that's, that's really dark. It's really dark. Now, all of this is to say the Feywild has grown and adapted over the recent years. And even some of the things discussed here today 
have already been retconned and changed for Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition, Time Warping being a perfect example as it's listed as an optional rule now that might go in either direction in the Dungeon Master's Guide, as well as the optional rule of even having like memory loss now. The point is, we still don't know everything that happens in the Feywild because it's it's pretty new in the game. And that's exactly how it should be. The reason the Feywild is such a marvelous setting for your group's adventure is because it's supposed to feel foreign, yet familiar, odd, yet known, beautiful, yet horrifying. Even the laws of the Fey can be bent to be what you want them to be. Dungeon Masters, if it makes sense in your version of the Feywild to have uh, Fey consider adventurers in their debt by simply taking food and drink and shelter, then include that. If you want your denizens of the Feywild to never tell lies, but instead speak in half-truths, do that. And if you want them to consider conditions of a curse absolutely unbreakable, even if they have the magic to technically undo them, then feel free to do that too. And so this leads me to my question for you guys. What are some of the craziest laws that you've seen or perhaps that you came up with for your own version of the Feywild? Also, if you happen to be playing in or running Witchlight already, be sure to drop a quick two, three sentence review of your experience so far. I will most likely be talking uh, about the new adventures because a lot of you guys have been begging me to re-review the adventures now that we've had more since my last like kind of big sweeping overview of all of them. And so I don't have a lot of experience with Witchlight yet and I will be taking what your feedback is into consideration for that video. So a couple sentences maybe. Keep it short. Short and sweet, please. If this is your first time here and you love role-playing games as much as I do, I would love to have you subscribe. I put out videos on GM tips, player tips, tutorials, and more stuff just like this. So if that sounds like something you might be interested in, just hit that subscribe button down below and come join us. I want to give a massive thank you to all of the incredible patrons over at welcomeadventures.com. Guys, thank you so much. It's because of you that I get to keep doing this. And so for that, I'm incredibly grateful. If you guys enjoy this kind of content, you want to support more content like this and snag some rewards for yourself, like maybe jumping in a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with me, head over to welcomeadventures.com and, uh, you know, check that out and stuff. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Cody and may your games be filled with awesome memories, and even better friends. I'll catch you guys next time. Yeah.